Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the mandibular third molar. What we are going to discuss in this video lecture, we are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development of the mandibular third molar. We are going to discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems. And we are going to discuss the key morphological features of the mandibular third molar. So watch this lecture till the end. So the mandibular third molar, the calcification of the tooth, it begins at the age of 8 to 10 years. So calcification of this tooth begins after birth. So the complete, the enamel is completed by the age of 12 to 16 years. This tooth, it emerged into the oral cavity by the age of 17 to 21 years. And the root, it is completed by the age of 18 to 25 years. Now, what is the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems? So, in the universal numbering system, the number of the mandibular left third molar is 17. And in a clockwise direction, the number of the right third molar is 32 in the universal notation system. So in the Palmer notation system, uh, the third molars of the right and the left side both have the same number and the number is 8. The only difference is the orientation of this shape. This shape, it indicates that it is the mandibular teeth of the left quadrant and this is the number of the tooth, 8. Similarly, for the right side, this is the shape of the right mandibular quadrant and this is the number of the tooth. Now, in the FDI notation system, the number of the left mandibular third molar is 38. It's not 38. So, three, it basically indicates the mandibular left quadrant and the 8 is the tooth number. Now, for the right side, the number is 4, 8, not 48. So, the 4, it basically indicates the mandibular right quadrant. And 8, it basically represents the tooth number. So, 4, 8 in the universal notation system for the right mandibular third molar. So, uh, some of the basic features of the mandibular third molar. So, the mandibular third molar along with the maxillary third molar, these teeth varies considerably in different individuals. So there, is, there are a lot of variations in number of cusps and occlusal design. This tooth, it basically supplements the second molar in function and when it is properly erupted. So it basically supplements, uh, helps the second molar in the grinding function. This tooth, it matches more closely uh, with this mandibular second molar. So it has a close resemblance. Uh, most of the time, the tooth has a close resemblance with the mandibular second molar. And we will discuss this point further in the upcoming slides. From the buccal aspect, the mandibular third molar, the cusps, they are short and rounded. These are the cusps and these are the buccal cusps and the buccal cusps, they are short and they are rounded. This cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp and this cusp is the distobuccal cusp. In between the two buccal cusps, there is buccal developmental groove. So similar to the mandibular molars, uh, there are two roots. This root is the mesial root and this root is the distal root. Now, in case of the mandibular third molar, the root are you the roots they are usually shorter in length as compared to the mandibular second or the mandibular first molar. So the roots they are generally they are poorly developed. The roots may be separated like the mandibular second molar in which the roots they are separated. 
or they may be fused with each other like this uh, like in this picture so the mesial and the distal root roots they are fused with each other for most of the root length and uh, in the apical portion uh, the roots now they are again they are separated so uh, from the lingual aspect uh, similar to the buccal aspect there are two cusps so this cusp is the mesial lingual cusp and this cusp is the distolingual cusp. So in between the mesiolingual and the distolingual cusp, this is the lingual developmental groove that is present between the two cusps. As I said, this is the lingual developmental groove. So similar to the buccal aspect, uh, the roots, the mesial and the distal root, they are fused with each other and they are pointed towards the inner distal direction. In the mandibular third molar, only two cusps are visible from the distal aspect. So this one is the mesial buccal and this is the mesial lingual cusp. This is the mesial marginal ridge that is connecting the two cusps. Apart from the mesial marginal ridge, uh, this is the mesial root. And the mesial root, it tapers more towards the, the cervical area, towards the root apex. So there is more taper as compared to the first and the second molars. The apex of this uh, tooth, uh, from the mesial root apex, it is more pointed as well as compared to the uh, first and the second molars. Now, if we look at this tooth from the distal aspect, so the four cusps, they are visible. So, because the cervical occlusal height of the crown on the distal side, it is less. And this is quite similar to that of the second molar as well. So, because of the less height of the occlusal surface and the taper of the crown on the distal side. Uh, the occlusal surface it is visible and all four cusps including the distal distal buccal and the distal lingual cusp they are visible so distal root it appears more smaller as compared to the mesial root therefore mesial root it is also visible from the distal aspect similar to all other teeth uh, that cervical line on the distal aspect it is straight Similar to the second mandibular molar, the outline of uh, the occlusal outline is of the tooth, it is rectangular. So, as you can see here, so the crown outline from the occlusal aspect, it is rectangular. The tooth, it has four well developed cusps and it is quite similar to that of the mandibular second molar and the most of the third molars they have four cusps so it is quite similar to the second molar and because second molars um, um, usually have four cusps uh, this one is the buccal developmental groove this one is the lingual developmental groove and this is the central groove so it is forming a plus shape pattern and it is also similar to that of the mandibular second molar uh, third molars, uh, they have a more rounded outline, especially on the distal side. So the outline of the third molar, it is more rounded. So because the outlines, it is more rounded. So usually the buccolingual measurement. So this is a buccolingual measurement on the mesial side. And this is the buccolingual measurement on the distal side. So the buccolingual measurement on the distal side is usually it is smaller as compared to the buccolingual measurement on the mesial side. So if you look at the occlusal surface, you will notice more number of supplementary grooves that are arising from the central developmental groove and the buccal and the lingual developmental groove. So these are the supplementary grooves and the number of supplementary grooves, it is more than the first second and the second molar. So as you can notice over here. So these are the few of the important uh, identifying features or important anatomical features of the mandibular third molar. As I said, it is the most wearable tooth. So there may be many other features uh, that, that her, the third molar may have in other designs or in uh, other shapes. 
so thank you very much for watching this lecture if you have any questions if you have any feedback please write down in the comments below feel free to ask questions again thank you very much and stay blessed